Okay. So hello everyone. This is like uh mastering shiny book up. This is the seventh course, and this is my first facilitating book club. So I'm I'm new to this. So pair with me, and um, I think this this book club will get a lot of information about how we could uh, building shiny applications and how we could. Uh, compare between the R and Shiny and uh, R and Python, sorry, uh, in terms of the version itself and the similarities and what is different. Uh, but the main book, I think, the main um, like focus will be on the the book up the book itself, is, which is mastering Shiny with Shiny with R. So just to not get confused, of uh, just I did. I said that uh, we'll do some uh, like uh, comparison and stuff. We'll do that, but um, the main focus because the book, of course, uh, written in R, so it's it's it's, uh, it's it's good to be to read to read it as as it is uh, until it's. I think yeah, uh, they said that they will publish another one with Python focused, but still, uh, we don't have that right now, so. We will try to make the comparison ourselves uh, with good examples and stuff. Um, so before that, let's, let's introduce ourselves. So my name is Ahmed, and this is my third book club. Um, I joined the uh, uh, R for Data Science and the uh, DevOps uh, for Data Science book clubs. Uh, so this is my third one, and. Um, my expectation from this book club is to have a solid understanding of the shiny framework and at the same time i uh, i'm trying to since i'm using already the by shiny or shiny for python in, at work i'm trying to like make the similarities and comparison and use the r version more more uh, more in my work so that's why i'm learning uh or interested to learn this this class this book. Um, so yeah, uh, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, uh, Omer, start with you. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Omer Durani, and um, I am uh, in another book club as well. It's the introduction to statistical learning with R, and I use uh, R Shiny in my work every day. Uh, but uh, I started just a few months ago, and I want to have a structured learning, so that's why I joined this club. Awesome. So, Derek, go on. Hi, all. My name is Derek Solberger. I'm a data science instructor at a university. I've been in several book clubs here in this Slack workspace, and many years ago, I used Shiny for making homework assignments and whatnot, but that was a long time ago. And I just want to catch back up, learn more of the current shiny technologies to work towards Quarto and WebR interactivity. Thank you. Awesome. So John, you go now. Hey, good afternoon, John Ellis. I'm in uh, North Carolina. Uh, I'm. This is my second book club, but I just started my first one last week, so very new to this, but I am a full-time data scientist working with uh, data solutions for the transparent, uh, transportation uh, market. I also um, am an adjunct professor and facilitator, and I'm really hoping to not only build up the skills, but also uh, get some practice and learning about uh, teaching and um, building skills to communicate this. I started with R many years ago and then switched to Python for a lot, but an R uh, project has brought me back into R and I actually published my first Shiny app ever. So I was pretty excited about that and really want to uh, know more about it uh, to get better at it uh, as we you know, get more from uh, proof of concept to go to market quicker. Yeah, congrats on, the, on your first uh, application. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Mobili, I hope I pronounced it right. Do you have a mic? Uh, okay. Yes, I, yes, I do have a mic. Uh, thanks everyone. I'm Mobili. 
And I'm a data enthusiast. I came across this cohort seven in our data for science, so I had to join it. Thank you. I have no much to speak. Thank you very much. Sure. So, Felix, 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 so cool. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Billy. You hear me? Felix. I, I think it's called Felix, right? Uh, she might be still uh, taking care of something at the door, she said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's go with Gabby. Hello, so uh, my name is Gabby. I am doing my second postdoc at the University of Maryland. I apologize if the if my connection is really bad. I am like in a technically like a basement, but it's not really a basement, but it's it's awful the connection here. But anyway, um so like I said, I'm doing my second postdoc at the University of Maryland. I'm an ecologist, so I work with wildlife. I've been using R since, oh my goodness, 2015 maybe, but I really, really started getting into it in 2017 when I started my PhD, and um, and I've never looked back. I'm not a data scientist, but I kind of wish I was. <laughs> I tried to read the shiny book, so I read the first, I would say, three or four chapters by myself, but I feel like I need the support of a, of a book club so that I can have like the momentum to keep reading, et cetera, et cetera, because I just left it. Um, but I'm very interested in learning because I feel like I can really use it in my career or in, in the line of work that I, that I do. So yeah, I'm a little scared and worried about the Python thing, but maybe you can explain that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll... we'll go through the Python versus R thing uh, at, at, at last of the book club. Um, so Aaron? Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, Aaron, I'm based out of Chicago. Uh, I'm an actuary, so I work in insurance analytics. I am in R uh, pretty much every day at work. I use it for personal reasons as well. Uh, I've been programming in the language for about eight years now. Uh, I've had some exposure to R, or so, sorry, um, Shiny in the past, uh, but it's not something I use regularly. So I'm hoping this book club kind of gets me um, back up to speed and, and really well beyond where I was at. Um, nice to meet everybody. Nice to meet you too, Aaron. Um, so I don't know if it's... Felixi? Felixi? Oh my God. I, I'm bad. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. Hello. What have you been? Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, it's nice to meet you all. Okay, I'm Billy Kisu. I'm from Nigeria. So I'm a data scientist. So I've actually been working with um, R Shiny for a while. So but I still want to have more experience sharing my knowledge and also learning from you guys. So I'm hoping to kind of brush up what I've learned and what I'm learning. And I still hope I can get more better insight into what you people are doing as well. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I think that's for the introduction. Um, so just notice, guys, that I'm uh, I'm not that an expert in mastering Shiny, so it's uh, I'm not an expert in Shiny itself. I used it at work just um, um, for for a couple of projects, uh, but the Python the Python one, but not the R one. So I'm new as used, uh, and I want to learn. Uh, I'm excited to learn, of course, because um, uh, this uh, this uh, book is is having a lot deep. Uh, deep knowledge in uh, in Shiny itself. Still, we we will focus on the practice part, like building uh, use cases or projects. Um, and I think this is what what 
really like we can benefit a lot from that. Um, and yeah, let's let me share my screen. Okay. So, you see, see my screen? Not quite yet. Not yet. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, it's working now. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, uh, let's go to the introduction on how, like, the book club's journal works. Um, let's continue. This is, of course, uh, there is a shared slides that we could depend on, uh, for the previous court that built for, for us to, to consume. So thanks for them. And, uh, if we have other information, new information or, uh, something that we want to share with other cohorts for, for uh, for example, we could like add slides to the um, to the GitHub GitHub repo that uh, these slides uh, I think it's written in our our markdown. Um, so yeah, this is what is like. Um, oh yeah, and to follow the code of conduct and all the stuff we we know. Uh, if if you're new to like uh, the book clubs. Uh, I I advise you to go to, to go to the code of conduct or for the community. Um, and yeah, it's basically like uh, simple stuff. Let's go to the base. So we have a meeting every week and like we try to meet uh, almost every week. Uh, if no presenter available, I, I should like present. Uh, if I couldn't present, uh, we, we could like have like, um, uh, we don't we don't have like a meeting for that day and then uh, make it like uh, the next week and so, um, and of course we if you have a holiday in your country or something you, you say it in the in the Slack channel, and the pace is one one chapter per per week, and if it's uh, because we have we will have like a dense chapters like I think chapter thirteen or fourteen I think, uh, that talk about uh, reactivity. It's uh, dips, de a very deep one, so we, we could like split the chapter uh, for, for two weeks or three weeks, depending on the, the pace of the, or the presenter. And uh, yeah, that's that's the base that we will go with. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, volunteering is like, is making you the, learn the most. So I would say, I would encourage you to, to volunteer for presenting chapters. Um, there is a, a spreadsheet uh, that is in the Slack channel. Uh, John I have uh, shared uh, recently. And um, let's, let, let me open it to see. Okay. Where is it? So. Yeah, the search sheet. So I encourage you to sign up for um, chapters that really interest you or something that you don't really know and want to get deep knowledge on. Uh, the more you explain things, uh, the more you will understand it. So it's uh, as simple as that. Um, for myself, I'm... I'm taking this first chapter, Plexico, 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 oh my God, I, I'm very bad at this, so sorry, sorry if I didn't pronounce it right, um, but uh, she will get the, the next chapter, Plexico, yes, and um, there is no one that for the third chapter, uh, Omari will take like six, six one. So I get the reactivity and reactive graph. Uh, yeah, so so feel free like to contribute or volunteer for this uh, in this search sheet. Um, let's 
go back to the okay yeah um so the instruction have its, its own github repo as i said before and this is like uh you will see it also in the slack channel uh in the top and um this is uh what what we are seeing now uh in this format as a web application okay yeah so this is will not be applied for us uh because this previous cohorts are already like uh did the last version of this book so we don't have so like much of difference differences uh but the content uh is still the same overview of the purpose of shiny main components of shiny apps introduction to the reactive programming and uh it's all studied in more details in later chapters so this chapter will uh like the first chapter we'll discuss today uh will give you an overview and like an overview of how to build a full shiny app, uh, but it will not get into the details until later chapters. Um, so yeah. No setting up our shiny. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, if if you're having problem with setting up our R Studio or deploying shiny apps for for later chapter, of course not not this one. Uh, you can like ask for help in uh, the Mastering Shiny book club uh, channel or help for Shiny uh, on the Slack channel. Um, okay, let's this is about it. So, if anyone have any question before I we start like first chapter. Yeah, I have a question about uh, the Python part. So. If you want to add like Python code, um, should we do that in different slides? Maybe we keep this material as is and create a different document for that. Yeah, I I thought about that. Um, we could add um, like different slides at uh as as I said in the section before. Um, I don't know if it's it will be simple as that because this is specified for the R version. So when people not interested in Python, so will will go into the repo and see like Python code. I don't know if it's is this convenient for them or not. So I will I would say it's better to just uh showing code um from the documentation and trying stuff in Visual Studio code uh live in um live in the, the session itself. And of course, if you don't have this, uh, like you don't want to learn about Python, you don't have to. So it's it would be be an additional thing. Uh, if you if you don't want to, you don't have. Uh, but if you want, you can like um, if you presenting the chapter, you could go with me uh, on like uh, on the Slack channel and ask a question. How is this? could be implemented in shiny in shiny python and we could like come up with uh, a code example like comparing what we are doing in in our in this in this in this particular chapter in shiny um so this is not what i have like if i'm open to ideas of course if you have any other ideas uh, but i don't know if it's if we add more slides for this one it could be trick trick people or make it inconvenient for for just the people that really interested in R. So what do you say? Yeah, I agree. Um, my suggestion is also to keep these slides as is, and if we make any changes, they are only related to R. Yeah. And like um, at, at, at the end of each, uh, each session, I will present like this is for me, of course, because I want to do this comparison. If we want to present, um, like I'm saying, I'm talking about the presenting the Python part, 
So if you if you don't want to, you, you don't have to. I I will present the similarities between the two in the chapters itself. Uh, it will begin with the second uh chapter, like not not this session, this next session. Um, and I will like show the similarities in code, uh, running code with Python Shiny, uh, in Visual Studio Code, and um, like showing like the differences, discussing the differences if you want to discuss. And the, yeah, it's uh, it's it just, uh, you will find it very similar. Like it's, uh, you will see if um, uh, in the next session where I introduce the, the UI parts and uh, the components names, it's just, it's just a simple uh, syntax uh, difference, but it's the same structure basically. So uh, you will find it easily to convert from, if you know R shiny, to convert to Python Shiny, you don't know how you don't you don't know you don't have to know even uh, Python well, so it's the same like use usage of functions. Um. So yeah, any other question before I begin like with the chapter? Yeah, cool. So, so the first chapter talks about your first Shiny app. This is the learning objectives. Learn how to create simple Shiny app. We'll see that it's pretty easy uh, if you have R Studio and could learn it very easily. Uh, define the latest version of an app that can build, okay? And uh, review different ways to start and stop the app. Uh, all this stuff, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, we'll finish it very quickly. Um, uh, identify the two keys component for every Shiny app and understand how two components are connected observe how shiny app react to user input so basically this is how simple by shiny app uh construct we'll talk about the constructs uh the two constructs that build any shiny app um so yeah let's begin um yeah yeah it's a, it's a uh, this chapter is basically a demo of how shiny is working in general uh, the intricate the intricate detail we'll discuss uh, in in the other chapters. Um, so it defines two components: the UI and server part. Uh, UI is like this. You see here, if if we go to the posit, you see here this is a posit uh, for our studio desktop. Uh, this is a UI that of uh, their website. So buttons, some text. Uh, like headers uh, and nav bars and, and this kind of stuff. So this is the UI part that we're talking about in the uh, in Shiny. So when when you describe the UI, you're just describing the HTML and uh, constructs that building the web pages. Uh, you don't know you don't have to know HTML or CSS or JavaScript to build this. Uh, that's the power of Shiny that make uh make you like uh don't don't need this technology knowledge of the, those technologies to begin building stuff um and that's why it's very convenient for data scientists that doesn't have a knowledge of any any web development knowledge um so yeah then introduces the reactive programming which is we'll talk about like very deeply about the active programming that's how Shiny observes changes in UI and informs the output from these changes. Uh, the observability is like telling someone like notices so something change and then interacting to that change. So if uh, if if you click the button, if you change uh, the uh, if you did this uh, highlighting a text, if you like um, scrolling. Uh, if you did like um, uh, uh, like uh, what's it called uh, selecting from a selector or something, all of this stuff are changing the um, uh, the UI or the changing the, the yeah changing the UI that need to be react on from Shiny. So we are telling Shiny, I did this, react to that to that change. What I will do what what you will do is that you will you define that. What is it exactly? We'll 
we will continue and it will be more obvious. So shiny outputs is is the output that you you see when when you begin shiny apps. So the UI part is like have different uh, like the different um, yeah it's the input part basically the 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 UI part is the input where is the input user input and the sh the the display in this on the screen of the website. So if you have a style, if you have colors, if you have uh, like uh, an image, all of this kind of stuff is the UI part. And the output of interacting with the web page or the input uh, constructs uh, will be uh, the outputs, shiny outputs. It could be tables and charts and anything, uh, anything like could be introduced as an output. For example, it could be output an image, not just table and charts. It would be outputted, output, outputting um, uh, what is. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, we will we'll we'll go through the the rendering function where uh, it shows the different outputs, uh, but in the in in the next slide or so. So. Yeah, if you haven't installed Shiny already. Uh, it's simple as it's installed packages shiny. I I think every one of you have shiny. Let me check if if it, any one of you have it ha, doesn't have shiny installed in their iStudio or so anyone ha, doesn't have shiny installed or not? Okay, nice. So uh, you could install Shiny as a package. It's a package now, um, it's, uh, and you could load it with lo library Shiny. Okay, so simple stuff. Let's go to creating an app. So we are um, importing a Shiny and creating the UI and creating the server. Then we use the Shiny app function to call on the in the UI and server. So this function is basically building the app uh, and those two constructs, the UI and servers is, uh, is the, the UI is the front end part and the server is the back end part where uh, you say that uh, this is how the page displayed and in, in the UI part and the server part, this is how the interaction between those uh, call, uh the, between the UI happen. So if uh, if I did that, what you will do in uh, in in return? That's that's the server part. Uh, and we will go deeper into the details how how this is happening. Um. So yeah, looking closely. Uh, load shiny define UI the HTML web page human interact with. Like this is a this is a web page. So if if you get inspecting this this page. You'll see that this is an um, HTML page, like div and H2 and sections and this kind of stuff. So that's what built what being built by Shiny behind the scene, but it makes you just writing R code, simple R code with functions, and it uh, it uh, in the background it's generate this kind of uh, HTML. Um, so yeah, let's see. so specific behavior are of the app. Okay, let's continue. By the way, if you have any question, you could stop me and ask. Uh, okay. So this is like the, the, the development life cycle of Shiny, if, how we could develop like the development process itself. Uh, if you have our studio open, let's see, I think I have here okay did it load uh, okay yeah so yeah uh, if you have a shiny uh, this is like uh, a simple example that provided by shiny itself when i download it um 
we'll go through the details of it, but not now. Uh, so the, the, the development process is writing some code, start the app and play with the app, write some more code and repeat. Okay, so this is a simple diagram. Uh, how how we could do that? Simply, if you have, this is a, a shiny application. You just run and run, click run app, and it will say here we are listening to this in this host. This is the host uh, URL, something like the DNS of the of the host, and uh, this is a port that 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 shiny uses. Um, so if if you go to that web URL, of course it's locally, so it's it's in look on your local machine. So if you copy paste it, you will uh, in in your browser you will see the the result. But of course there is uh, this uh, pop up of in 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 browser of uh, inside the inside our studio. Uh, I wouldn't like. Uh, I didn't like to use it. I, I use like Chrome mostly, but yeah, it's good to to see the stuff uh, quickly. But you see here, if uh, if I change the number of fans, uh, the graph interact based on the the changes, and this is build uh, with shiny. So um, we will of course discuss what is this. Uh, What's called is the slider code and uh, what is the plot code and all this kind of stuff, but not now. So if you open it in the browser, you will find you will open it in your default browser, and yeah, it's that simple. Uh, like you have a shiny app that's running on your local machine in this URL, uh, so you could play with it, and after you change, like let's change something. For example, uh, let's, let's change this title to new and save and just press uh, reload app and it should like change it. Okay. Let's try it in the, oh yes, it's changed it. We refresh here again change it so you, you try play with the code and reload and you see that the 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 changes uh, in front of you um okay let's see here oh gabby i i, I did start I, I i write start uh so did did it not shown in, in in the chat? I can see it. Yeah, yeah. I, I did yeah, I did start uh, in the in the beginning. Uh so yeah. Um uh, let's go back to so this is a, basically the, the life cycle. And you could like enter uh destroy or uh exit from this button, stop, just interrupt the R and uh, it will uh, like close um, the session and that's it. Um, let's see what else. Four digits. Yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Let's continue. So yeah, adding UI. So as I said before, the construct of uh, of or the building blocks of a web application is UI or HTML templates uh, that build on top of each other as a tree-like structure. And Shiny tried to simulate this with a building component or UI component, but in a simpler way using R. So it's built for you, the UI that you could use, uh, in, but just by calling function with inputs uh, as uh, parameters. So for example, this select input and this verbatim text output two different construct of uh, of the ui the first one that taking input from this from the user where um, let's let's try this one okay if we just okay and run the app
So yeah, this is the input. Select it, select out input. And um, if you see here, you, you'll find this, this is all the data sets that inside the data sets package. Uh, so that's what we provided here. This is the list uh, of the, the, the data package. The storage, uh, every like uh, component have uh, parameters. You can see the parameters uh, if you hover over it like this, or like, um, I don't know if this is working. Yeah, um, let's see. Oh yeah, you could see the, the actual code if you pressed control and double uh, one click, like uh, left click. Uh, and you, you could see the code of the input, how it's constructed. Um, and you could see the, uh, of course, the, the parameters that you could provide with, provide it with. First was first one is input ID and the label, the choices. The choices is uh, what is what the list is shown in the selector, which is, which is here. Um, where is it? Did I? Yeah, I I accidentally. Yeah. Um, these are the the choices. So we just uh, showing the the choices uh, in the in the screen. Uh, and this is the the real like the source code basically for uh, for this function that called uh, select uh, selector uh, select input. Sorry. And yeah, you will see that different construct the input and the output. Uh, at the end of each uh, sentence or um, function name, it will say if it will show the if it's if it's the type input or output. So the input that we 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 can interact with the input uh, components we can interact with. Uh, the output is that we use this input to show something to into the user. Uh, so here the verbatim text output is showing um or receive or receiving um, um a text basically a text from the user and this text are um, handled in the server side so since why it doesn't show in the in our application here because we we don't have a server side that interact with this these uis this is the one that before it so I didn't delete it. I I I I intentionally left it here. Uh, so it 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 doesn't know what to do with what. So that's why when we continue in the uh, in the slides, we will find like uh, the server part and try it. Um, so yeah, for for new functions, uh, Fluid page. Yeah. So what is this Fluid page? Fluid page, I would call it a, a layout component in Shiny. And this la layout is um, is basically um, like how you construct things in the page. Uh, for example, you would find uh, if you go to Shiny documentation, and I would advise you to go to Shiny documentation and read about the component itself, yourself, you will find, let's see. Yeah, build a user interface. This one, I think. The layout. Yeah, you will find it under the layout. A lot of like stuff happening in the layout, uh, like a little component that you could use in the layout. Here we we use the page sidebar where you have the uh, like a sidebar and a, a main page and the sidebar beside the page. Uh, the fluid uh, one we'll see here. Uh, page fluid. Yeah, this one. It will, uh, yeah, this is, yeah. Um, it just like make, uh, uses behind, behind the scene, um, a function or, uh, a, a layout that you, you say basically, uh, this, uh, layout, like, uh, this is a, a, an empty page basically with, um, with a component that changes in sizes. So this, that's the, comes the name fluid. Um, so yeah, let's, and yeah, so selective is the input, select input is the input control. 
So verbatim text output is the output control, as is, as we said. Um, so input here is user to interact with, uh, show code results. Uh, yeah, we could show show code the result. We didn't we didn't see how how it shows uh, the code result, and the table output is display tables, of course. Uh, these are all the ways that you generate HTML. Okay, not the flip is is just one option available. Yeah, as as I said, there is a lot of options uh, you could use for layout components. Uh, you could use. Uh, and here is an example. Yeah, uh, I think this is clear. So yeah, now the behavior, the server part. Uh, we talked about how they construct the display part or the front end part. Now the server part is basically how how we inter how we like writing the logic uh, to handle the UI part, the 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 front end. So reactive programming which is the, the type that build uh, or the programming pa paradigm that build uh, in Shiny to uh, tell, tell Shiny how to perform a function. It's as it's simple as this, uh, this interaction. I, I, I did something to the UI and to react to my, uh, my change in the UI. Uh, you're coding, uh, yeah, you're coding the range of app behaviors, but the user of the app demands the output based on their selection of inputs. So you, you take you you give the choice to the user to change uh, the the UI, and you write the logic to handle this. Uh, when when something change, do that. When something change, do that. Um, this code still shiny. How to fill the summary and table outputs we defined in the UI. Again, I will not go into more details than this because we. We will handle each part in the next chapters. So that's why I'm I'm trying to not over uh, complicating things now. Um. So yeah, this is the server part. Let's try it in the in our studio. Okay. Reload. Save. Yeah. So this output. We're having a summary variable inside the output, which is something that we talk about. What is the output? What is the input? What is the session? What is what? What are this have to do with reactive programming? All those kind of stuff we'll discuss. Um, so we said that this is a variable that's called summary, and they having a render print function. So basically, we said render to the screen this text, and the text is. Uh, of course, the data set itself, uh, uh, the, the names of the data sets. Let's see, beside the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trying to make it right. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, okay. So yeah, we we'll see if uh, after. Um. So, the render print will render a, uh, a print, which is a, a print meaning the uh, text, just the text, and render table will render a table. So, what other stuff that we could render if we like see with with autocomplete, we have render plot, render image, render print, render table, render text, render UI. And there is a data table, of course, and cached plot. I think we'll touch on most, most of these in the next chapters. Um, so yeah, this render print do something like interacting to this summary, which is you will find here in the verbatim text output. This is a uh, the output UI, where it receives what, uh, the, the calculated uh, stuff that we did in the server part. So this name is interchangeably like uh, similar to this. This have to be that uh, the the output the output ID have to be uh, the same name with this uh, output 
variable uh, summary. So here is summary and say again, same as this output table. Um, have it, does should be have the same name. Um, and yeah, uh, it, it, this is showing a table. This is showing a text, and the result is like that. Of course, if you change the the data set, it will show different statistical stuff. Uh, and you, you could see that um, this summary function is doing a summary for the data set. So uh, that's why you see the, the summarization of minimum, median, and mean. Yeah. So let's call back. Yeah, we have, we talked a lot. So yeah, text table plots, images, all this kind of uh, the, the render types that we talked about. Uh, so there is a specific render function for each type of them. And the new UI, UI component, this will make a custom stuff that doesn't like build for us, basically. We just build it from scratch. That's why it's pretty important, the render UI function. Um, so let's see. Yeah, the reactive expression is is what it is what we use to applying ensuring that don't repeat yourself uh, duplicate code. I think here will you I think it's not articulate in this first chapter to discuss reactive expressions because we will we'll dive into it, but. Mainly, it's it said that uh, it's used for like preventing duplication of code, and this is a best practice. And uh, it's it's combined logic. Uh, it's combined the same logic as variables and functions, but is a bit different as it, it, it uh, does not work uh, the same in Shiny uh, as as normal R programming. Yeah, it's it's a bit confusing. This 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 is a bit confusing, but. Um, we will discuss how a reactive expression is working in more details. So just, it's a, it's an overview. So create a reactive expression by rubbing a block, yeah. And you can use the reactive expression like a standard function with one important difference. It only runs once and catches the result until the input is changed. So this is very important. Uh, now this is, a, this is a distinguish between shiny this is like this functionality or this uh, way of calculating stuff is differentiating between Shiny and other frameworks uh, because Shiny is like building the the UI once and use it if you reload the page it's or it's already cached so you don't you, there is no calculation again uh, but other like other frameworks. Uh, Will do recalculate every time the 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 UI uh, that you you refresh the page, and it's not convenient for like consuming resources and other stuff, and not best practice and you duplicate you duplicating your code and other stuff, but yeah, but this is the main difference, important difference that really distinguish shiny and other frameworks. Um, the below the uh, code retrieves the data data set once, not twice. Yeah, and this this is because we don't uh, change, uh, don't have changes in the UI. That's why it's it's uh, if you get if you get the data set and store it in some variable, it it's it's there until we close or uh, like. Uh, uh, closes like the, the shiny app itself, the server itself is, is shut down. But uh, in in the same in it's in the same like area la, area like it is basically stores uh, the input or the data set as a variable in the session when the when shiny starts. Um, so yeah, and we we'll, of course we'll discuss more about how this is work behind the scene. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is the flow. The user input reactive and output changes. The user input is uh, like the selector or um, 
or uh, or a text or something that change. And uh, the output, as we said, types of output tables, uh, plots, images. And the reactive is, as you said, to Shiny that react only when something new happened in the UI. Uh, that's that's the reactive all, all are doing in the, as the reactive function is doing. So which lives in the server of the app, the UI server connection can be visualized like that. Okay, it's not like uh, the best, like it's not the best uh, image to show the interaction. There's a lot of uh, images that shows better than that. So I will not like explain this. Uh, then in other chapter, we'll see that uh, the, the Oh yeah, we could like see it in the documentation. Uh, the, it's it's have a better visuals, but using our first app an example, this is a UR part, the server part. As we said before, this is this is a select input, verbatim text output, the table output, and the reactive uh, side of in the server is doing the calculation uh, behind in the back end, or visualizing or. Um, calculating the stuff uh, to 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 display in the UI uh, output, the UI output. Um, yeah, a good way to see this action in action is to use Shiny Showcase mode. Uh, okay. Because, because we don't have time, I will try to skip this one. Okay, yeah, like I think this is the last one. There is a shiny cheat sheet. If we go to the shiny cheat sheet, we'll see. Let's see it. Come on. Yeah, you have like the shiny for Python cheat sheet and uh, others. What is the R one? Yeah, yeah, you could like. Uh, I think this one. Oh, shiny public sheet. Sweet. I don't. I didn't find it. Yeah, right here. Just a little bit above. Yeah. This one. Yeah, interactive web apps. The shiny sheet. sheet. It doesn't say that are shiny. Uh, so yeah, this is a sheet sheet for uh, and uh, like different stuff we could deep, we could build with shiny. The building blocks that we told we talked about the render functions and but I would like I, I would encourage you to go to the documentation is because it's they write a good documentation for this. Uh, you don't need like uh, like a cheat sheet for. For the like understanding the basic functionality at least, um, yeah. Let's go back. There's other resources you could check. Uh, Shiny Gallery, like the example of Shiny apps that exist in uh, uh, in the Shiny website. If you go to the gallery here, you'll see a lot of uh, demos and showcases, uh, use cases, like this one, single file Shiny app, and telephones. You will find like a lot, uh, a lot of examples. Of course, it's not, not, uh, not just this. So yeah, I think the code it's in each one is provided, or yeah, the source code is provided, and you could see what, what you could build, how you could build this in Shiny. Yeah, the source code. Okay. Yeah, and they have Shiny Widget Gallery and Shiny Dashboard to build chat da dashboard, sh Shiny Dashboard apps. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a framework inside a framework. Uh, I would say uh, we'll use it or we'll 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 introduce get introduced to it when we're building a dashboard full dashboard. I don't know if it's it it will used in the, the case study in the chapter four or not, but yeah. Yeah, and that's it. I think this is the last slide. Um, do you have any other like question before we wrap this up? This one, I would say that 
I didn't like uh, prepare the Python stuff for first chapter because it's uh, an overview chapter. So uh, it's like uh, I'm preparing all the, the book in one chapter. So it's it's not, it's useless. Um, I will begin with the second chapter, the shiny and different similarity with shiny. Uh, of course, we will continue the discussion on Slack channel. If you have any questions, how everything is working, um, you could also ask about like chapters that we don't discuss yet, it, but because maybe like someone uh, have like read the book already or have that have the knowledge of uh, like better than us. So it's I would encourage you to ask um, in the Slack channel. So yeah, do you, do you have any other questions? Okay, so thanks for meeting you, everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, the next the next uh, sessions will be uh, like will be more in depth uh, because we just this is a shot just an overview of the of the chapter uh, of the shiny framework. Um, you will see that that uh, I'm I will try to like giving you points or deep uh, deep knowledge. Because I I did like see the source code uh, in Python Shiny, so I would say I would try to uh, introduce some deep level knowledge uh, into the discussion, and hope it will be useful for everyone. So thanks for for joining, and see you in the next session. Great, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.